What happened in this episode is crazy. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm sorry, dear. I'm so I'm sorry this happened to you. They actually did it. They actually sent him inside of the walls and this... <laughs> this was genuinely horrifying to see, but there's something about this entire situation that cannot be ignored and that's the fact that this proves the bottle trees don't always send someone to a specific location. They always take you different places, but my mother said this one was special, that it would take her to the tower, to the children. And this is absolutely huge, because Victor said that his mother told him this specific bottle tree always leads to the lighthouse, but <laughs> obviously that is not the case. The reason why this is so important is that this conclusively means it was the boy in white who sent her to the lighthouse. I'm going. One thing that people never seem to bring up is that the boy in white changed his voice to sound like the Ankui children and this is completely insane because the writers are showing us just how strong the manipulation that these people are going through really is. However, it gets so much worse when you think about everything we've been seeing in context. They're in the diner right now trying to figure out what it means that my mom got out. What do you think it means? Honestly, I don't think it means anything. This would make us suffer to give us hope. Maybe that's why I let her out. Because Dale went into the tree and got trapped inside the wall, this makes it obvious that everything has been a ploy. And I will keep saying this because it's so obviously true. The reason Dale didn't make it to the lighthouse is because the entity literally directed him into the wall. And this was done because the entity wants to keep them from looking for answers and that's part of why everything in this entire season the monsters have been doing is about making the people more and more afraid. And this is why Tabitha seeing the boy outside the hospital was such a big revelation. The entire point was to say that she was never actually free and she was still tethered to Fromland. And this is what the entity wants to reinforce into the minds of the people living here. It wants them to feel like it's pointless to fight back and try to escape. That's why every time they try doing it, it doesn't work. And that's the entire point of this season. Like, it, <laughs> we know that the entity planned for Tabitha to leave and for her to come back. Because the same night the ambulance was coming into town, the monsters had already set up a trap. The writers literally had Randall saying that this was the one night, the one night where the monsters did not follow their routine. But the biggest thing here is if Tabitha learned anything that threatens whoever's controlling the monsters and this being knew they were coming to town, which he obviously did, he would have sent the monsters to kill her and Victor's dad. But he didn't. Obviously, it's not coincidence. The monsters completely ignored Tabitha and Victor's dad, which means their arrival was always a part of the entity's plan. It's just simple logic. Come on. But I think that's just because he's scared. What do you think he's scared of? That I'm gonna die. Everyone here ever loves your dad. The entity is actively making an effort to put these people into scenarios that they're most afraid of and that's why they specifically added this line in this episode that Victor's biggest fear is losing the people that he loves and this is coincidentally the same episode where Victor is reunited with someone that he loves who he hasn't seen in decades. I mean, do we need to be worried about the baby? I mean, I just keep explaining expecting that at any second he's gonna come bursting out of her with like with fangs and, and 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 claws it's using these people's already existing trauma to destroy their minds it's why fatima's baby is a demon because ellis's biggest fear is having something be wrong with the baby it's having someone he loves be corrupted by this place just like what happened with his mom okay no 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 hey, oh, you fucking left me out there man you fucking left me out there you fucking left I suspect Randall's biggest fear is actually being abandoned. His behavior is classic for someone with a very traumatic childhood. It's all just an attempt to protect himself from being heartbroken by other people. And this is obviously part of why the entity set up that scenario in where Boyd had to abandon him. Logically, <laughs> 
<laughs> it's kind of crazy to say this, but Boyd did make the right choice. However, it doesn't make it any less painful if you were Randall in that specific situation. So... You were in the barn with her. How are you still alive? They wanted me to watch what they did to Randall. Why'd they leave him alive? Why not just kill him? I'm going. I'm going. What's going on so far is that the entity wants to break their resolve so that they stop looking for answers. That's what this entire storyline has been leading up to. The boy literally manipulated Tabitha using the Ankui voices to get her to the top of the lighthouse. And considering that the boy was also the reason that Boyd got infected with the worms... <laughs> At this point, it's obvious that they brought in Victor's dad so that they could use him to torture Victor one way or another. And what we saw with Dale ending up in the wall, the trap with the ambulance, the fact that the monsters did not attack Tabitha or Victor's dad, to me, it's obvious this was all a setup and part of the entity's master plan to get these people as deep as possible into the pits of despair. And once Fatima's demon baby comes out at night time and starts killing people in Colony House, oh, it's gonna be bad. We need to find a way home. There are answers out there. And if we're not gonna fight like hell to go home, then we might as well swallow a fucking bullet right now. When you think about this from a narrative perspective, the entity is obviously not all-powerful, it's obviously not all-seeing. They just need to actually try to understand the properties of this land and the entity in general. Like for me, the first thing that I would have tried with the tree is literally just taking a cell phone, tie it to a bunch of clothes, and just drop it in while it's recording footage and audio, and then just try to pull it back, see what happens. If it works, that's very valuable information because it means you could tie a rope to somebody and then drag them back, you know, assuming that they don't get sent into a wall, but even if it doesn't work, then you write it down and say, oh, I put it in one time at this time and it got stuck. That's valuable information because you can try to see if there is a pattern to where the tree sends you. And considering there was almost 30 people in that bus, I guarantee you there's a bunch of cell phones, iPads, and laptops hanging around that nobody's using. We know for a fact that there's a variable that makes the tree send you to the lighthouse. And the only way you're going to find out whatever that variable is, is through experimenting with the tree. And because of this, that Dale's sacrifice is incredibly valuable. I just hope that somebody in this entire crowd wrote it down for future generations who are going to be coming into the town, but, but these people... <sighs> you know, I don't even know if I'd find anything down there. It's natural design. Same reason your brain's in your skull. Nothing about this place is natural. Wrong. Nothing about this place is familiar. This place isn't unnatural, it's unfamiliar. And they need to learn the specifics about why it works the way that it does, if they want to get out. But one thing that I want to mention is in episode 4, Victor somehow knew where the rocket threw into the faraway tree was going to come out. So he clearly has a way to control where the tree sends someone. Whatever that means, uh, <laughs> you tell me.